Hello, I'm David. I'd like to give you a quick demonstration of the current working prototype of the DFB1 Falcon Booster. The DFB1 is an external 030 processor running at up to 50 MHz with up to 128 MB of external fast RAM and its own reprogrammable flash ROM. Here I'm powering it from an external ATX power supply because with the debugging headers that this development version has, it cannot fit with the normal PSU in place. One of the design goals of the final version would be to allow the PSU to remain in place uh, and there to be no soldering required. Um, the top shielding will, however, probably need to be removed. We booted up here with the enable disable header set to disabled. So this is actually just running the normal stock Falcon CPU and memory. Uh, this is just to prove that uh, you can fit a switch and have the uh, the Falcon back to its stock configuration uh, quite trivially. You'll see here that the uh, CPU figures are all 100%. Uh, ROM and RAM has not been accelerated either. Now we'll switch that off. And I'll fit the enable header. This time, when we restart, the DFB1 has sprung to life as can be indicated by the two LEDs at the bottom left. The first is the enable LED and the second indicates that the bus has been taken control of. Now we're still in TOS 4.04 at this point, but you may notice that those windows did appear to open a little bit quicker than normal. Now this is not because the CPU has been accelerated, in fact we are running at 16 megahertz still, but there is one key difference that we should see. There, now we've got a nearly 150% speed figure on the ROM access. This is because the the flash memory is a lot faster than the onboard EEPROM. Now let's quit out of that and we're going to run a small acceleration toggling program. You'll see immediately the next two LEDs on uh, the DFB1 have lit up. Uh, one indicates that acceleration mode has been enabled and the second indicates when we are running in that high speed mode. The, uh, the booster slows down for accesses to uh, STRAM and uh, the, uh, the normal motherboard peripherals. I should say that uh, none of these tests have shown Alt RAM working yet. Uh, that's because um, using Alt RAM with TOS 4 normally requires you to run NVDI in order to uh, bypass the blitter. Uh, this is something I don't really want to demonstrate at the moment because I'm just trying to show you the, uh, the performance of the card rather than NVDI. Anyway, here are the figures and these look pretty good. So 311% for the uh, CPU figure, that makes sense, this is a 50 MHz card. The ROM access has gone up to 236%, that's showing that flash ROM at its absolute best. And even the RAM access is a little bit faster because even though we're running still at 16 megahertz when we're accessing the ST RAM, uh, the little bits and pieces between the RAM accesses will actually run at 50 megahertz, uh, and therefore you'll get a slight speed boost. Now let's disable DFB1 again. Let me just remove this jumper. And we'll boot back into the stock falcon in TOS4 mode. What I'm going to show you here is how to reflash the onboard ROM. So I happen to have a, a series of image files stored on the hard disk here. These are 512 uh, megabyte uh, big endian uh, ROM images. And in this particular case, I'm going to take uh, the MUTOS UK and drag it to the Flash TTP program. Unfortunately, as you can see, that does take a couple of minutes. 
writing to Flash is quite slow. You have to write one word at a time, and each word takes four bus accesses. But we'll just turn this off now, uh, re-enable DFB1, and press our button. Immediately we're into Emutos, there's the splash screen, and you can see this time 128 megabytes of alt RAM have been detected. So I've got this configured at the moment, still run in 16 megahertz mode from boot, so uh, I just run the acceleration program. And now we can go back to Gembench and see how this looks with alt RAM, fast RAM, and at 50 megahertz. You can see the headline three figures are the same as when we did this with no alt RAM enabled, but now we can see alt RAM is detected and the test is run. Now 0% might not sound too brilliant, but that's because it has nothing to compare it with. 7.9 seconds on this is, however, pretty good. It's not CT60 levels, but it's not bad for an 030. Now let's run some more benchmarks, starting with uh, probably the gold standard, NIMBench. Now you'll see that the uh, the ST RAM figures here are um, below 100%. Uh, this is because I'm running this in uh, 16 color uh, VGA mode. Um, they need to be uh, running ST high in order to get 100%. But otherwise, I think you'll agree those figures are pretty impressive. Now, one of the real sticking points with DFV1 version 3 was trying to get the onboard DSP to work. It has a slightly strange bus compared to everything else. So here it is just to demonstrate that uh, it is working, albeit not accelerated, as I don't uh, make any modifications to the motherboard itself. 100% across the board. Now on to the uh, memory speed test. Uh, this shows uh, that the writing to the alt RAM is blisteringly quick. This is actually the maximum theoretical throughput of a, uh, an 030 running at this speed. Uh, read performance is some five times better than we see with STRAM. Okay, well, enough of the statistics. Let's see it in action. Can it run Doom? Of course it can run Doom. I'm using PM Doom here, and I'm going to allocate myself, uh, let's say, 60 megabytes, because I can. The little counter you see at the top is uh, frames per second multiplied by 10. So it's not showing 95 frames per second, that's uh, showing 9.5 frames per second. Uh, and you'll see it averages around 4 frames per second. Uh, it's not what I call supremely playable, but um, given how this uh, looks on a uh, stock Vulcan, uh, I think we can uh, safely see the performance difference using DFB1. This is a great time to see that uh, fifth uh, LED on DFB1 illuminated. That's the alt RAM access light, and uh, when that's glowing bright white, you know that you really are running at the fastest speed possible. Okay, that's enough fun and games. Time for some more boring benchmarks. So this is Christian Zietz's port of the CoreMark benchmarking system. You can see we come out roughly where you'd expect a 50 MHz 030 to appear with uh, fast RAM. Uh, we are at 23.6 iterations per second, which is just slightly above 23.3 for a Telvel Fire 536 and below a TT accelerated to 60 MHz. Next, let's have a look at the performance uh, when uh, drawing a fractal uh, with both the DSP and a uh, software renderer. The DSP here is unaccelerated and this clocks in its normal time, which is incredibly impressive, of 6 seconds. The software renderer at 16 MHz normally takes about 30 seconds. So we should see some improvement on this. Not quite able to get up to the 30 MHz DSP, which is obviously ideally suited for this task but we run it very close, coming in at 8 seconds. That is a substantial improvement. We see that FPU is disabled uh, in this particular demo, and that's true, I have not attached the fly lead 
uh, that uh, is needed to uh, drive the on-ball FPU when the DFP1 is enabled. Um, to be honest, the results are pretty tame. It's not accelerating the FPU. Uh, the results from the FPU-enabled uh, fractal drawing uh, test is actually a lot slower than the software at 50 megahertz. I am actually experimenting with uh, an external FPU that can run at a faster clock cycle and use the full 32-bit data bus, um, but we probably won't see more of that until DFB in Vision 4. Now let's be honest, no Atari or Amiga accelerator demonstration would be complete without a brief burst of uh, Frontier Elite 2, uh, but I want to be a little bit more technical than that. So. What are the performance gains here from DFB1? You can see I've modified Frontier here slightly to uh, put a FPS counter at the top right and also count the number of frames between two specific points in the introduction. I'll let this play out, but um, here come the spoilers. Normally the DFB1 will clock at around 3,400 frames per introduction loop. Uh, for comparison, the uh, stock falcon uh, normally weighs in with about 1,600, so that's a pretty much a two times effective speed boost here when playing Frontier. Uh, just for comparison's sake and, and to show the efficacy of the additional alt RAM, um, when running at 50 MHz with no alt RAM, the figure is normally around 1,800. That's only marginally faster than, than uh, running at 16 megahertz. Shows quite the importance of alt RAM. And running with alt RAM, but at 16 megahertz, uh, comes in at 1,900, which is faster than at 50 megahertz with no alt RAM. So you can see the importance of having alt RAM on any booster. Anyway, we'll allow this to play out. We'll get our 3,400 frames. And I thank you very much for watching.